Pro Shop's mothership with Jim Sabika, the man who coined that phrase, by the way, after all, with another ex exciting, I'm excited, I can't help it, Jim, Yeah, I did. edition of the Curator's Corner. We're out here at the brand new NRA National Sporting Arms Museum. Jim let us come out to do a little remote broadcast, and I said we're going to do some Curator's Corners. So before I kill this poor guy, i got a couple more cases I'm going to show you, at least for this trip out here, but we're coming back. So, okay, Jim, so we, we're at the 1900 to 1950, yeah. golden age of hunting. But before we get into this beautiful case here, what's this here? I, I need to talk about this. What do well, we have? we've come down about three centuries of the timeline of American sporting firearms. We're finally into the early 20th century, and we've got a couple of shotguns here that bracket this era uh, very nicely. This gun right in the very front, this huge gun, uh, is a Colt double barrel shotgun. Now, people know Colt for uh, uh, handguns. They know them for the AR-15 pattern rifle. But in the 1880s, 1890s, Colt made a great line of double barrel shotguns. They made them in 12 gauge, they made them in the even bigger 10 gauge, but they only made one 8 gauge in the entire history of Colt manufacturing, and this is it right here. The biggest shotgun that Colt ever made. 8 gauge shotgun. And they made it for one of America's biggest presidents, ah. for Grover Cleveland. This ah. was his personal 8 gauge shotgun. He was a big man, he was a 300 pounder. He could soak up that recoil. He could handle it. So uh, yeah, that, uh, that was his. And then we go to the other end of that uh, first half of the 20th century, and we have Dwight Eisenhower's personal Model 21 Winchester shotgun. You see there the five stars for the five star general. You see his initials on the trigger guard. You see his, uh, his name on the leather case there. So we have our, our great presidential shotguns uh, here representing the, uh, the first half of the 20th century. All right, so what do we have over on this wall here? We get into our exhibit case here, and we start off uh, kind of with everybody's sweetheart, the 22 plankers, boys' rifles. Gotta love them. Uh, and this is what everybody shot. This is what everybody shoots. It's a great tradition of, this is pure recreational hunting, is the, the planking, the 22s. And uh, uh, you've got several of the classics there, the early Winchester pump actions. A couple of the unusual ones, the Winchester thumb trigger, which uh, does not have a tr traditional trigger. It's released with a thumb right behind the bolt there. Wow. And the very unusual wire frame Quackenbush, which really was very, very modern concept for its time. It was made to be an inexpensive single shot boys rifle, but uh, novel and, and uh, uh, very popular in its day. Nice. And of we course, we're into the era when uh, uh, the repeaters, in terms of shotguns, are really catching up and taking over from the traditional double barrel and single barrel. They're still popular, but you're moving into the pump shotguns, like the classic Winchester Model 12, the smaller version of that, the very elegant 410 gauge Winchester Model 42, uh, and of course, Ithaca and Marlin are both creating uh, pump shotguns in this time period along with uh, Browning and Winchester, all creating the pump, and then also the semi-auto shotgun. The lever actions are still very predominant in the early 20th century. Uh, Marlins, Winchesters, Savage has come in with its model 1899 with a uh, lever action that through the use of a rotary magazine allowed people to use pointed Spitzer bullets rather than round nose bullets with a tube magazine like the early Winchester lever actions, you run the risk of igniting a round if you've got that pointed Spitzer bullet resting against the primer of the, the cartridge in front of it uh, under recoil. And the Savage 99, the Winchester Model 95 solved that, the 99 with the rotary magazine, the 95 with the box magazine, both very popular lever action rifles. But we're also beginning to move in to the bolt action rifle era. The GIs in World War I carried bolt action rifles. They liked the strength of the action. They liked the accuracy. They came home and they wanted bolt action sporting rifles. So you see here a very classic Mannlicher Schoenauer uh, model 1903 bolt action with that classic butter knife handle, but also uh, the Winchester model 54, the Remington 720. Uh, Great Mauser. Yeah, speaking of your GIs, they mm -hmm. sporterized military rifles, made sporting rifles out of classic bolt actions, and you're seeing the beginning of the real popularity of semi-automatic 
actions uh, in the field with these uh, Remington and Winchester semi-automatic rifles. Wow, and just looking at all this in this case, it really was a golden age, you look at it. It was, and so you know, this part of the museum, I mean, people come here and they see these incredible historic guns. This was, this was Theodore Roosevelt's gun, this was Dwight Eisenhower's mm -hmm. shotgun, but you hit this part and people start saying, wow, my dad yeah. had a gun like that, or granddad took me hunting the first time he used a shotgun like that. Right. And those stories, that concept is every bit as important or more important to the message of this museum right. as these historic firearms. Awesome, Jim, thank you so much. We got one more special segment coming up next week, so be sure to tune in as we conclude just our first round of Curator's Corners out here at the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum. So Jim, thanks for the, the look here, this beautiful stuff. We'll wrap up this first, the timeline part of the museum. Uh, next week, when we come back with more Curator's Corner right here, NRA News, Cam and Company on Sportsman Channel. We'll see you next week.